Today in Master of Craft, original compositions of fruits, vegetables and other delicacies with fine decorative carvings. How does Ukrainian food carving differ from Eastern and European? How did a Hollywood star receive the most unusual bouquet in her life as a gift? UATV studies in applied art at the junction of carving, cooking and even floristry. One important process in the history of mankind has never stopped – the interpenetration of cultures, especially material ones. For thousands of years, it has been facilitated by trade and, for example, many common household items can be found among Ukrainians and Crimean Tatars. Sometimes the influence of one culture on another is so camouflaged that modern people do not even know about these connections. What could be more characteristic of highway? than Hawaiian shirts. Today, they are sold around the world as an original national product, but in reality, they are the product of a unique mixture of cultures. By the beginning of the 20th century, islanders had long been wearing colorful sarongs and kimonos imported from East Asia. The first prototypes of Hawaiian shirts began to be sold by the Japanese, settled on the islands in the 1920s. But the founding father of this phenomenon was Ellery Chan, a descendant of Chinese immigrants. He created a professional workshop for sewing shirts and the material for their production was piles of unsold Japanese kimonos. It was from their racks that the so-called Hawaiian shirts were made. At the beginning of the 21st century, the interpenetration of cultures rapidly grew many times over and the world became too small. This is how the traditional oriental craft known as food carving came to Ukraine. I have been practicing carving for six years already. This is the Thai art of carving of vegetables, fruits, cheese, while in fact in my hands even Ukrainian salo or pig fat. Natalia Donska is a modern master of food carving from Kiev who has developed her own style. Her works are known outside Ukraine and only at first glance it may seem that this art is very simple to learn. The first impression is that it is quite simple and easy when a person watches a video or sees the result of a bouquet. But when faced with all the processes, this is a very long and tedious process, hard work, and often this process consists of many stages. What role does carving play in Oriental cultures? How did Natalia Donska decide to change her profession as a journalist to the art of food carving that is rapidly emerging in Ukraine? And how much effort does it take to create eatable bouquets? Hawaiian shirts originally originated from a kimono and thigh carving from mukimono. This is the name of the Japanese art of decorative carving of vegetables and fruits. Its history stretches back hundreds of years. During this time, in different provinces of Japan, there were special and carefully protected traditions of mukimono. Masters learned with the help of fish knives called hocho to carve incredibly thin flowers, birds, people, animals and even entire landscapes from various vegetables and fruits. While the technique of food carving is kept in circuit by a Japanese craftsmen, these did not prevent this art from spreading in China and Thailand. True, the Thais would not agree with this. It's difficult to say specifically where carving originated from the beginning, because there are legends. In Japan, there is a legend of the origin of carving. In Thailand, there is another legend. In Thailand, very often, very large exposures are made with carved watermelons with peacocks. The Thai craftsmen carve elegant flowers out of them. Initially, this was done to decorate the tables of the Thai royal family, but eventually the carving was mastered by villagers. The main reason to cut something out of fruits and vegetables is the local New Year's Song Grand, which is celebrated from April 13 to 15. For holidays, for weddings, for various events like this, the largest expositions are cut out, where 20 to 30 masters participate in the carving. They have a tradition of culture, where in every household, yard, people cut out and practice this art for self-development. This is an integral part of their life. Western culture willingly absorbed the traditions of both mukimono and thai carving. In the 20th century, they appeared American and European schools of carving of fruits, vegetables and other delicacies like cheeses. As a rule, these are decorations for high aristocratic receptions and banquets. They are not for ordinary people. As a hobby, carving spread a bit in independent Ukraine, but it was impossible to expose the works and all the more they could not be sold anywhere. The public simply was not ready for it. Then in 2010, Natalia did not even think about carving.
I built a career in journalism. It was political journalism. It's a constant, irregular and intense schedule. After the birth of my child, I stayed at home for two months. That's all I had the energy for. I then realized that I should look for a new profession. So first I opened online stores selling children's toys and clothing. Natalia almost by chance came upon carving when she was staying with her sister in Transcarpathia for the first time having picked up a knife in an attempt to cut just a about anything, the future master could no longer stop. Probably the first year and a half, it was purely a hobby to keep busy doing anything, but it was in no way close to what I'm doing now. It is very difficult to start something like this when you have a hostile attitude toward it. I gave my friends the first works, yes, they said, wow, that's really cool, but somehow that wasn't enough for me. In Ukraine, there was practically no place to study carving. Natalia had watched hundreds of hours of educational videos on the internet and had visited many online master classes before she realized how to properly do food carving Ukrainian style. How it is done. Carving is an activity primarily for the patient, diligent and persevering. The last quality of Natalia was shown at the training stage. I wrote to some masters for six months, they kicked me off. They simply were not interested in teaching me on the internet, because these are well-known carvers and they only did their programs live. So I had to persevere in proving that I really wanted to learn this new art form. I had to literally beg for these lessons. Pretty soon Natalia realized that even the finest card flower cannot be considered a guarantee of success in Ukraine, where people are not accustomed to carving. She wanted not to just do it in her spare time, but to start her own business. The search eventually led Natalia to a simple idea. What if to turn gift baskets into objects for carving? So that is how her famous carving bouquet appeared. In fact, the concept of a carving bouquet is from us, accordingly, it comes from me. Every bouquet that I make now tells the story of a certain person. The fact of the matter is that it is a very personalized bouquet. And this means that the work on each composition begins with the question, what does a person like and love? This could be called floristry, but we're not talking about flowers, but about food, sometimes the most unexpected types of food. We had an order for a bouquet. They asked me for three bottles of kefir. How can kefir be in a bouquet? What are you talking about? But the woman who got this bouquet as a gift has such a saying in life. If there is a bottle of kefir in my fridge, then there is happiness. When she was given this bouquet with roses, made of different cheeses, with olives, with this kefir, her delight was simply out of this world. Especially for UATV, Natalia shows how she creates a special bouquet for a friend. The master decided that in the center of the composition there should be a red shoe. Of course, not a real one, but a chocolate one. A familiar confectioner made this figure on order in advance. Meanwhile, Natalia goes shopping, which is the second most important stage in food carving. First you see, the shelves are full, but when you realize that you need to cut out an orchid from a melon, then not every sort suits you. It should be juicy, crispy, it should be exactly white, and it should be white in appearance. In short, if there are five sorts of melon in a shop, only one sort will be suitable to carve an orchid. To find the highest quality of this sort, you need to visit several grocery stores or supermarkets. Cutting out each such flower requires dozens of hours of practice. Natalia uses traditional thigh knives for carving, double-edged and with a triangular blade.
In this bouquet, Natalia also decided to use strawberries, currants and figs. The basis is the leaves of lettuce and mint. According to the master, a selection of compatible products is a different puzzle altogether. We have ingredients and we understand what the person likes. But how to combine these products? What to throw out of the set? What to add to emphasize it? If a fruit bouquet comes with cheeses and with hamon or ham, then there should be sorts of cheese that are suitable for hamon. It should be a fruit which reveals the taste of the hamon. This is a melon, a pear or grapes. Here you need to take all these nuances into account. Natalia emphasizes that it is very important to design the composition so that it looks aesthetically pleasing. Even after the basic elements are put on plates, the master even understood that the stands for bouquets should be made specifically for fruits, vegetables or other delicacies, which will be fixed on them. In the meantime, in two or three hours, a gift bouquet for her friend is ready. This is a minimalistic bouquet, though not for consumption. I know her well, she's a perfectionist, she's a girl who pays much attention to details. For her, it's not important that there are a lot of things in this bouquet, but a few details, each of which is in its place. There are two pieces of figs, there are only five of these orchid flowers, there's a strawberry and there's a red shoe. There's also mint in the design, seen as one of her favorite favorite cocktail drinks is mojito. At first, Natalia tried to do everything alone, and then she realized that the processing of some products is better to entrust to outside specialists. Like with her largest and most famous bouquet, it can be called Ukrainian Dream. Believe it or not, the central element is roses made of Ukrainian salo. You cannot buy it in a store. The salo should be especially processed first, so that it is dense and hard enough for carving. Salo for bouquets is prepared in a special way. It is kept under press, in spices. I do not do this, because this should be be done by a person who understands exactly how this is done. The basis of the bouquet is slices of black bread. The composition consists of several species of herbs, tomatoes, bell pepper, three or four kinds of sausages, ten sorts of pickles, marinated patisson, plums, cucumbers, champignons, peppers, garlic, and so on. Sometimes Natalia adds olives or cheese. The master stresses that in this composition the aesthetics are subject to pragmatism. It means the bouquet is intended for large festive parties, not for long hours of contemplation or admiration of its beauty. When you get such a gift, it is impossible not to eat it. It just smells like this, eat me, and that's all. It all smells really crazy. And when a man receives such a bouquet, his working day breaks down completely. If we bring such a bouquet to the office, they often complain, saying, well, it's the end of the day, who's gonna work now? And this is one of the most desirable gifts for men. They say that you should never give flowers to a man, but after all, as the saying goes, the way to a man's heart lies through the stomach. Natalia says that for two years Ukrainian bouquets with salo roses have already visited 10 countries of the world at various international conferences and diplomatic receptions and also starred in three films. One of the buyers presented the composition as a gift to a famous Hollywood actress and its master did not even know about it. We got an order for a minimal bouquet with salo on a small round loaf, which is the most minimal size we make. I knew that it was taken somewhere to another country because they asked for our refrigerator back. And after six months, this customer again wrote to us regarding the order and said, well, we presented the last bouquet to Yuma Thurman and caught it on video. But unfortunately, no one made a photo of the Hollywood star with the Ukrainian bouquet. Natalia is not upset and hopes that her works will become gifts for many more world celebrities. In addition, a new generation of carvers is emerging in Ukraine and in other countries. Her master classes with great success are held throughout Ukraine and since the end of 2017, even in many countries in Eastern and Western Europe. I have a girl who studied at the carving course and she makes jam. She does really crazy and cool things. She marinates citrus peels with carvings. I have girls who are now doing carving elements. Yes, this is also a gift, and it is often taken abroad. I personally think this is a really cool gift. This is how Natalia Donska found the business of her life at the crossroads of Western and Eastern cultures with the Ukrainian culture. She believes that almost everyone is capable of inventing original art at the junction of already known ones. And she's convinced that modern Ukraine is an ideal place for creative experiments.